I recently made a video about using a PUBJS device to control music on a mobile phone. And while I was doing that, I realized that the method this uses, which is basically emulating a Bluetooth low energy keyboard, can be used to control lots of other stuff as well. And the really obvious one is um, to control a video player as well as a music player. And so this can quite happily control Netflix and YouTube and all the rest of it. But doing it just by button press um, seemed a bit boring. So I was trying to think of what I could use to turn it on and off. And um, it struck me that I'm really useless at getting motivated to use exercise machines. So what if I could make an exercise machine that turned the video off when I wasn't pedaling fast enough and that, um, that obviously only kept it on while I kept pedaling? And it turns out it's really, really easy to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. So this is a pretty standard orbital trainer thing, um, but you can see it's got some wires coming out the back of it. So um, there are two of these wires, the, um, the ones that go in here. These actually go through to these random things that you hold on here. But, um, but this one, this goes all the way down to um, a sensor that's buried somewhere down here. So, what I'm going to do is try and have a look at what signal is actually coming out of this one. Luckily I had a few connectors hanging around so I've actually been able to just clip this in either side without damaging any of the existing wiring. Um, but if you wanted to do this you could actually just strip the wire just a little bit and, um, and put on two extra kind of tap wires off it. Um, for the moment I've just left these wires dangling and I've attached a oscilloscope to them. So we'll be able to see what happens when I start pedaling. So we can see that normally the voltage that's coming out of this is about three volts, which is probably the voltage that's on the AA batteries, which the little computer thing runs on. Um, but if I start using the trainer now, we'll see that as it moves around, we get these little pulses. And in fact, the speed of the pulses depends on the um, speed of the wheel, so how fast the trainer's going. So if I go very quickly, you end up with lots of very quick pulses, and if I go slowly, you'll see um, only a few pulses. So this is really handy. Um, we can hook onto this and we can use this not only to see whether we're pedaling or not, but to see how fast we're pedaling. So for instance, we could make it turn off the video playback um, when you were going below a certain speed. In fact, we could use this for logging um, the whole exercise and that's everything done. All I've got are the cables I had here. Um, these are wired on to a flying lead and that lead goes through a hole in the back of the PUCJS case to um, the pins labeled D1 and ground. Uh, so all I have to do is put that back in the case. Um, I'm going to use the cable tie um, just to go through the hole here and tie this onto the exercise machine. And I just ping the case back over to hold everything back together. All I have to do now is put this in line with the exercise machine. If you haven't seen the last video about playing and pausing music, you should probably do that now. Um, but this is the Web IDE. Um, you just follow the instructions that come with PuckJS to get up and connected. Um, so on the left hand side, you can access the Puck directly by writing commands. On the right hand side, you can just write code. So what I've done here is I've used the same set watch that we did last time for the button but instead of the button, I've connected it to D1, which is what we wired the exercise machine to. Um, so if I upload this code now, every time um, we get that square wave going down to zero, um, it should print rotated. So if I spin this now, hopefully, we should see it prints rotated. So now all we have really have to do is to, um, is to count the number of rotations. So if I... Um, create a variable called rotations and make that naught and then we just increment it when this happens and now all we'll do is um, every so often or maybe every two seconds um, we'll call this function and at the moment I will just print the, um, the number of rotations and set it to zero again so now if I run this Every few seconds it will print a number. Normally that number will be zero. But if I start um, moving the machine, 
it's a bit hard to do sideways, but you should see that it gives us kind of quite a good idea of the speed that we're going at. So if, if I try and do this slower now, we'll see smaller numbers. So it looks like a good speed for this is probably five. Um, so I've got some code that I did earlier, which I shall just paste in here. Um, basically what we're doing is we're using the same Bluetooth head stuff um, that was shown on this page and we used before. Um, we're still using rotations, but this time we're storing the last number of rotations as well, so that we're not doing it just on the last two seconds, but on the two seconds and then the two seconds before that, which is like a bit more fair to make sure that it's not as if um, you've just had one small time where you've been a bit slow. Um, so here we're doing exactly the same thing, except we're pulsing the blue LED so that we can just see that it's actually measuring rotations. Um, here we're saying that um, when we finally connect to a device, we start our interval. And when we disconnect, we remove it. And this just means that it's not going to be using up any power um, when you don't have a device connected to it. It's just going to be able to sleep completely. So in this case, um, when the rotations in the, this two seconds are greater than play speed, which I've said is five, and the last few rotations are greater than play speed, um, then it'll start playing, otherwise it'll stop playing. And the function that handles playing is just this one. Um, unfortunately, some players don't seem to um, use the stop button at all. They don't pay any attention to it. So all we can do to be compatible is just to keep hitting the play or pause button. So it could potentially get out of sync. Um, you just have to make sure that when you weren't pedaling, the video wasn't playing, and then everything will start working perfectly. And now that's it. All you have to do is click upload again. I'll link to this code in the video description. Um, you get this message, which is fine. That's just saying that it can't turn itself into a USB HID device while we're connected to it with this computer. Um, but now it's just time to disconnect it with this button and then reconnect it on the iPad. Okay, so I now have the um, iPad balanced on the exercise machine. I've got the puck here. I've changed the case so that we can actually see the, the lights and everything through it. Um, in settings, Bluetooth, you've got puck shown. If I tap on that, it'll say it would like to pair. Click yes to pair. And hopefully it's done and connected. So now all we have to do is um, go and run whatever app we're interested in. So if I go back to Netflix, um, if I start turning this, we'll see that the LED will start flashing. And after about four seconds, it'll start playing. Uh, we should see a green LED. And you see it starts playing and everything's great. But if I actually stop pedaling, a few seconds later, the red LED will flash and it will turn off the, um, the video. So yeah, now we have a um, perfectly working exercise machine that punishes you if you ever stop pedaling it. Thanks for watching. So if you like this video, please subscribe and share it. I'm gonna be trying to do an awful lot more um, of this kind of thing with microcontrollers, home automation, electronics, and that kind of stuff.